Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, wherever you are on this planet. We are here with another special edition of Wows Alive with our host, Ned Dennison. Ned? Hello, everyone. I'm the chairperson of the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. It's my pleasure to have yet another one of our honorees with us today. There are very few people in the world who can claim to have held the title of the king of the channel. Merv is one of them, with seven crossings between 1967 and 1974. He ripped the title off honoree Brogan Doss from Pakistan, and about a year later, it was ripped out of his hands by Des Renford, MBE, the great Australian swimmer. Merv, tell us about your early days growing up in Weymouth in the south coast of England and, and some of your dry, dry land sports experiences. Yeah, hi, uh, Nate, how are you? Okay. Yes, yeah, certainly. Um, in, actual, in actual fact, I was actually born in Devon, a little bit further along the coast, uh, in a place called Newton Abbott. And uh, because of my father's work, we moved to Weymouth uh, just before my third birthday. Um, I was actually born on May the 25th, 1949. So I'll, I'll leave you to work out an order I am at the moment. <laughs> um, but no, uh, grow, growing up, growing up in Weymouth was brilliant because I lived so close to the beach uh, that when we were children, we were growing up, I had, a, I had a good set of friends, and we would often just go down to the beach, probably go down about 9 a.m. into the, uh, uh, in the morning, and um, with, a, with a, uh, some money in our pocket so we could buy some uh, lemonade or, or, or whatever to last us through the day, and then we used to come home, uh, as long as we were home by dark, our parents didn't really mind. Uh, so it was either that or all going out on our push bikes. I didn't have, I, I suppose, my my childhood days were very much the same as uh, as many others, really. Um, you know, we all did very much uh, the same the same kind of thing. And uh, but every time, well, I say every time, almost all the time when I went into the water, oh, I used to love it. I used to absolutely love it. Uh, my friends and I used to go in and probably for about an hour and uh, then they wanted to come on out but I, I still wanted to stay in so they used to come out some bathe for an hour come back in and I was still in the water splashing about it was brilliant and like I say uh, it was these early days that I wasn't a great reader if you like I wouldn't sit down for hours on end and read books but I would pick up the old newspaper and I would find, I'd try and find little snippets, um, obviously during the, you know, especially during the summer months about somebody swam the channel and this way and that way and how many hours. And it was really, it was honestly from a very early age, a real boyhood dream of mine. Um, but I didn't tell anybody. I did not tell anybody. You know, you know, some some kids wanted to score the winning goal at Wembley in an FA Cup final. Some wanted to score the winning goal in the World Cup final. I wanted to swim the English Channel. But it's just one of those things that I thought I would never ever get to, you know to get the opportunity. Um, sport sport wise, I did play a little bit of rugby. Um, at school, and like I say, I did. Uh, I did actually, you know, do a lot of swimming, do a lot of cycling. I used to play. We used to go up the local park and uh, kick a bit of football, um, you know, between us and everything, and uh, which is all good fun. Uh, at the age of seven, I joined the local swimming pool here at Weymouth, and um, but. I, I was never a fast swimmer. I wanted to represent the club, but I was never I never got into the swim team because I just wasn't fast enough, but I wanted to do something competitive. And as the as the years rolled on, when it comes to when I became fourteen years of age, when I became fourteen years of age, uh, the local swimming club were looking for a junior water polo goalkeeper and I thought well that's competitive and uh, I went for a trial if you like and I got in and uh, I became a, a junior goalkeeper in the, in the water polo team 
And, uh, well, I must have done quite well because uh, I actually played quite a few games for Dorset. So, you know, I went from club, club polo to, to county polo, if you like. And, um, but like I say, in all these years that were going by, I wanted really to swim the English Channel. And uh, that was my dream. But like you say, we all have dreams and, you know, not all of them come true. And I just thought that I'm just Merv. I mean, why should this particular uh, dream come true? Because I haven't got the opportunity. But uh, in 1951, and I was about two years old then, in 1951, there was a guy called Godfrey Chapman. Now, Godfrey, if you like, was, uh, was known as Jeff. For whatever reason, he was known as Jeff. And he swam the English Channel and um, he, in, in a Daily Mail race in 1951, and he was the first Englishman to complete the race back in 1951. And um, he actually had the nickname of Channel Chapman. Uh, in, 19, in 1964, there's another guy from Weymouth called Greg Schofield, and he swam the English Channel also. He lived in Weymouth. And then, along with all of that, there was a guy who's played the water polo with, and he was training for the channel, and his name was Phil Gollop. Now, Phil, at the age of 16, and that was in 1965, at the age of 16, he swam the English, he swam the English Channel, and he became the youngest male uh, to do so at the age of, uh, at the age of 16. Now, all three of these, all three of these swimmers were trained by a local postman called Tom, Tom Watts. And when Phil came home, he lived the other side of town from me. He lived the other side of town. And I, and I, I heard that he was going to have a bit of a house party when he got home on this particular Sunday. And uh, on this particular Sunday, it was absolutely chucking down with rain. But I thought, I'm going to go over and tell him, well done. You know, I mean, heck of an achievement, heck of an achievement. So I lived about four miles the other side of town. I got on my push bike uh, because I still wasn't old enough to drive. I got on my push bike and I cycled to Phil's house. And uh, I, knocked on, I knocked on the door and lo and behold, Phil answered the door. And I said, hey, Phil, well done. Brilliant, mate. And he said, hey, Merv, come on in. Come on in. Come on. You're soaking wet. So I went on in. And it's not till about then I really told somebody, and, and, and this includes my parents as well, if you like, uh, that, that I didn't tell. I didn't even tell my parents what my dream was. And that was, this is probably the first time I told somebody. I just said, here, Phil. I wouldn't mind doing what you've just done, honestly. Well, I could do it. I don't know. It's such a dream at the moment. And it, Phil said to me, well, Merv, come, in, come and meet Tom. Well, I knew Tom, really, and Tom knew me. But I went over. We got formally introduced, if you like. And, um, and Phil said, here, Merv wants to swim the English Channel. And uh, Tom looked, one looked at me, and Tom, I can hear him now, he looked at me and sort of said, well, Merv, you look big enough, you're ugly enough, so I can't <laughs> see why not. So, so the thing was, <laughs> Phil, Phil, Phil did it in the October, and, um, and Tom actually said to me, he sort of said, look, Merv, if you're still interested, because Phil's having a break now, but he's going to go back to the channel again very soon, or he wants to get, you know, keep himself fit or whatever. He sort of said, so he's having a break now till after Christmas. If you really are that serious, you come and see me 
in the new year, and this was a, this would have been um, this would have been 1966. He said, "You come and see me in the new year." He said, "And and then we we'll go from there." And October to December came, and it was literally days into the new year, literally days. And I, I cycled over to Tom's place, knocked on Tom's door, and said, Tom, I'm here, I'm ready to train. And by me doing that, I think he knew how serious I was, and it literally went from there. And that's how I came from, if you like, from a boy to a 16-year-old ready to, or, or hopefully, train to swim the English Channel. Is this uh, Tom Watch, our uh, honoree? I didn't quite get the last uh, name. Yes, yes, sorry. Yes, yes, he is. Yeah, yeah, Tom Watch. Tom Watch. Uh, so it, it, yes. it, 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 it's interesting you bring him up because um, uh, Mark Newman will be on with us in a, in a few days, and I know Mark was, was quite close to Tom. I didn't realize yeah. your association, so I've, I've asked, uh, I've asked uh, Mark to do a bit of a review of, of Tom's life and career. Merva, along the way in your sporting career, you, you kind of failed to leave out the fact you were a medalist in the British Wrestling Championships. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Well, when I started training, when I started training in 66, um, we, did, we didn't have a local swimming pool in Weymouth. And so we had to go. Uh, uh, there was a, a what they call Bobbington Army Camp, which is about... 20, 25 minutes drive um, outside of Weymouth. And I used to go there with the local swimming club for one hour, one hour on a Friday night. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, it was a case of going down to the local um, youth club and circuit training along with Tom and Phil and and everybody uh, on Friday on Friday, as I say, we went to Bobbington Army Camp for one hour, both Phil and I. Saturday afternoon, I, I played rugby to get myself fit. Because remember, these are still winter months. Saturday afternoon, I, I played uh, rugby for Weymouth. And, um, and then on Sunday morning, I played football to, uh, to help keep myself fit. Anyway, while I was down, while I was down to the... Um, uh, the local youth club, there used to be Weymouth Amateur Wrestling Club. And just to break, just to break, uh, you know, I, I wouldn't say monotony, because that's the wrong word. But, you know, you know just, just to break the schedule a bit, Phil and I would go and train with the wrestling club. And um, we're there for, you know, just a bit of circuit training. And the guy who used to run it sort of said, here, Merv, there's some competitions coming up soon. Do you want to do it? And I said, no. I said, I don't know nothing about wrestling. I've never wrestled before in my life. I've only done these, these circuits with you. And he sort of said, well, he said, we, owe, we hold uh, that there are a couple of things for the, for the Southern Counties Championship, which are going to be held in Bermondsey, Bermondsey up in London. He said, and see, so you get on with that. He said, and then there's the British Championships up in Manchester. He said, and we got most weights there, so, but we haven't got an intermediate heavyweight. And I thought, oh, thank you very much. <laughs> and um, so I, I said, uh, uh, yeah, all right. I said, you give me a couple of more. I said, but don't you blame me if I come back, you know, I, you know, you know, with nothing type of thing. No, he said, don't worry. He says, a bit of fun. Don't worry, you'll be all right. So anyway, they, they showed me a couple of moves and a couple of holds. And lo and behold, I went to Bermondsey and up there, and I got into the final. And the guy, but I lost the final. But I came home with the second, uh, the second place shield. And uh, I thought, well, that was all right. I enjoyed that. When we got home, the, the following week, he sort of said, here, he said, the British championships are on in a couple of weeks. Come on up to that one. That's up in Manchester. And if I remember rightly, it was at Bellevue. It was up at Bellevue in Manchester, or in that area anyway. So I said, yeah, I said, come on, then. 
So off I went with them uh, up, to, up to Manchester, did all what I had to do and everything, and lo and behold, there I was, I got into the final again. And I thought, oh, that's all right. And once again, uh, I got beaten in the final. I actually got beaten in the final. But, uh, but I had a silver medal. I was, I was a British intermediate <laughs> silver medalist. And, uh, you know, and I, I still got that medal. I still got it. And, but the thing was, the other good thing about it was, I'd only been doing these, this bit of wrestling for about two months and ended up being British, British intermediate heavyweight. So I, did, I got that before I even jumped in the water at Dover or Cali or wherever. But, uh, yeah, I still got it. And, um, and that's all because of the training and, and different things. And I was amazed just doing it after two months that I come home as a silver medalist. And, um, and that was it, really. You know? So let's, so let's, let's, let's take that, that first big English Channel swim you had. You, you grew up in Weymouth, a, a hotbed of uh, English Channel swimming. You yeah. had the uh, English uh, champion from the Daily Mail race. You had uh, Tom Watch, uh, owner um, coach, you had uh, Philip, the youngest at the time, male, and uh, right. you're now in the English Channel, and you got a bit of fog. Take us, take us to, at the point where you get a bit of fog. <laughs> oh, it, it was more than a bit. <laughs> so, seriously. Um, well, my although Tom Watch started me off in channel swimming, my father then started looking after me, and my father became my trainer, and Tom stuck with Phil. Although we all went together, like it's a foursome, if you like, Tom, you know, Tom overlooked us all, but my father was, became my trainer. But the, the weather sounded so good. Uh, my father was working as a telephonist, and I traveled on up to Dover on the Saturday, not, not meaning to go in the water, not till about the Monday, but the weather sounded so good that, um, that they sort of said, here, Merv, you're going in tonight. I said, what do you mean I'm going in? I'm not, I'm not sort of going in till Monday. I was such a novice, you know, and probably naive, if you like. And uh, now they said, you're going up. And uh, they said, what we've done, we phoned up Jeff Chapman, we phoned up Jeff Chapman, and he's driving to Dover, and he's going to be on the boat with you. So you got somebody from Weymouth with you. I mean, there was another young lad called um, called Jimmy Halls, um, and everything. But and he also came on. He, he was about ten, I think, at the time. And anyway, he, uh, Jeff Chapman travelled to Dover, which is about a five-hour trip, which is about a five-hour trip from Weymouth. He just about made it before the pilot boat was leaving. Folkestone, and uh, we crossed over to Cap Grenade. I uh, obviously stood on the beach there, got all greased up, and at 1, 1 a.m., I waded into the water off of Cap Grenade, and everything, and the, and the sea was like a sheet of glass, and I didn't know what to expect or anything, but when I did my first stroke, I thought to myself, here, Merv, this is what it's all about. This is what you've been waiting for all of your life. So, you know, make the best of it. Just, just do your best and make the best of it. And, um, and it was like, come, come dawn, the fog was coming down. And when we say fog, I guess, I guess the majority of the swim it was down to, oh, I mean, if we're talking in old money, if you like, it was down to about 10 yards, sometimes less than that. And it was down to 10 yards. And I didn't know what to expect. And I thought, well, every, I didn't know any difference. Uh, I thought, well, perhaps this is why the channel was so hard, because of things like this. This is why not a lot of people swim the channel. And without a word of a lie, um, there were boats, ships, coming out of the fog like nobody's business. 
I the heck, I know I, I know I'm making this all sort of, uh, you know, blowing out of proportion, but I, I'm really not. And uh, all, the, all these ships, all these ships were coming out of the fog, you know, and, and all this sort of thing. And I just thought it was all part and parcel. And uh, in actual fact, I was told, I was told some weeks later that for about six hours, for about six hours, they didn't know whereabouts they were in English Channel. Not, you know, not at all. They, they didn't even know at some point if they're coming from France to England, they didn't even know if they were on the correct side of the English Channel anyway. But to, to see some of these big tankers come out of nowhere, and I, I don't know if I was scared or not, really, because I thought, well, this is what happens. This, this, is, this is channel swims. And physically, I felt all right. Mentally, I felt all right. And I thought, and this is my boyhood dream, and I'm going to keep going, mate. I'm going to keep going. I ain't stopping. If I, feel, if I feel all right mentally, if I feel all right physically, I'm going to keep going. Anyway, we went on and on and on, and uh, and like I say, we had more than we had more than one ship, one you know huge tanker come out of nowhere, and everything. And um, anyway, as the time went on, they had one of these like little ship to shore um, uh, radio sets. I think they were about a four mile distance, and they're trying to get in contact with people on. On the on the uh, on the English side, and they heard somebody, and they knew they're on the right side. That's when they were sure they're on the right side of the English Channel, and they knew we're only about four mile off. And you know, things I suppose were said and and whatever. I mean, all I had to do was put my head down and keep swimming, Merv. You know, you keep swimming, and they'll they'll have to get me in somehow. And then then this thing was to make sure we landed all right. Uh, or, or came in somewhere. I actually landed in Margaret's Bay, and by this time, my father, my father, had got to Dover, and he was at St Margaret's Bay, and there were, and there's a big car park at St Margaret's Bay, and there are loads of cars there, loads of cars, and so what my father did with my mother and other people, they went all down through the car park, all the people in the car park, and they sort of said, "Air." Can you blow your car horn to help guide, well, they were fishing trawlers then, to help guide the fishing trawler in because my son is out there swimming the channel and they just want to know exactly where they are. And so all these cars at St. Margaret's Bay just blew their horns. They blew their horns and they guided, they guided us in. And, um, and that was it. I mean, in fact, they stopped me in the war and they sort of said, Merv, can you hear that? And I said, what? That noise? And I sort of said, well, yeah, is that a car horn or is that a fog horn? Are we just out in the middle of the channel or something? Is that, you know, is that, you know, the good winds or something or other? They said, no. They said, you're approaching St. Margaret's Bay and those are all car horns in the car park. You know, your father and your mother got everybody to blow their horns and they gradually guided us in, and with about, with about 50 meters to go, I could just see the cars in the car park, and we just went in, and all I can remember is saying to the observer, here, can I stand up and walk out, although it was very, very rocky there, here, can I stand up and walk out now, because I'm running out of depth there to, you know, to pull my arms through the water, Merv, stand up and walk out, if you walk out, stand up and walk out. And all I can remember is getting up, standing up, and starting to walk out. And, all, and there were loads of people, because everybody was wondering what was going on with all the car horns. There were loads of people on the beach. And all I can remember is the odd one or two people, keep back, keep back, keep back. Don't touch him, don't touch him. Let him get out the water. Before you slap him on the back, let him get out the water. And, I, and like I say, I set off at 1 a.m., from Cap Brunet, and after 18 hours and 34 minutes, and obviously, which has just gone half past seven in the evening, um, I, I, I walked ashore, it's at Margaret's Bay, and 
well, I achieved my boyhood dream, really. And that was it. And we're there sort of chatting and going. And as they pulled the, as they pulled the dinghy up, there's a big wooden dinghy. Uh, we're there for about half hour chin wagon and different things and, and whatever. And the tide started to go out. And they left the they left the uh, the dinghy a little bit high and dry up over all these rocks, and so he said, uh, "Can't we go get this dinghy back in the water?" And I sort of said, "I gotta go." And so I helped uh, I helped some of the guys push the dinghy back in the water so I could jump in it, get on the boat, <laughs> then go on round then go on round the boat, and you know, and that was it. But it, I, on, I, honestly, I, it was horrendous. Yeah, go on. <laughs> I love yeah. it. I love it. I love it, Merv. It was Merv, a, a couple, a couple of things for for the a couple of things for the listeners. First of all, um, it was very silly, Merv, for you to be out there before GPS when, and ALS were invented. <laughs> yeah, GPS would have right. told the boat where it was, and ALS would have warned them about the other tank. And, they, and there's but no I, road I to, signs I, either. There's no road signs. I need to, to sort of say this way to England, <laughs> you know. <laughs> I, I need to bring you to the one other technological advancement. So when, when people yeah, do on. the channel today, they, uh, they have their carbohydrate mix, which is scientifically yeah. developed to give them the energy and whatever. What, uh, yeah. what kind of food do you have out there, Merv? <laughs> you really want to know? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, 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 those people that know me quite well, they know I enjoy my food. And so when I went on to any of my channel swims, I used to take with me and obviously eat. I used to eat things like cheese sandwiches, ham sandwiches, chicken legs, um, a certain make of uh, chocolate flake, um, different, different uh, uh, chocolate bars. And um, I used to enjoy some um, creamed, uh, tins of creamed rice. But uh, uh, I always found I always found that very good, and uh, but but I, I I never had any of that sort of uh, and any of that sort of stuff. I just had what I call proper food. Now we're a lot of swimmers, you know. They tread water and they down it in about I don't know thirty seconds even. I mean I I was out there and I used to have a banquet, mate. I, I used to have a banquet. I would say I did honestly. I did really. And I was, I was, uh, I was, I used to be there just treading water for about ten minutes. Do, do, a, you know, are you one of these guys that used jokes. to? Used, are you one of these Pardon? guys who used to tread water and go? Well, what have we got to eat up there? Give me the menu. Yeah, well, you, well, yeah, well, that's right. I mean, I can remember once swimming all night. And, and in the morning, everybody had got up, and they're having all I could smell was eggs and bacon's and beans and fry bread, tomatoes, you name it. They were cooking it, and what I wouldn't have got for them to lower some of that in the water. And I was quite happily sat tread, you know, I quite happily sat in the what well, treading water there, you know, eating it. I would honestly, I, you know, what once or twice, and I used to enjoy it. There's no doubt about it. I used to enjoy, I, 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 I mean, I used to enjoy the swim as a whole. I really, really did. I really used to enjoy, I really used to enjoy the swim as a whole. It was brilliant, but I used to get told off once or twice, even by my father, oi, come on, we're very up, otherwise we're going to miss the tide. And I thought, hey, hang on a minute, I want something to eat, I'm blooming starving. You know, and I used to wash it down, I used to wash it down with a cup of coffee and, you know, some, uh, you know, some orange juice or something. You know, you know. Then off I went. But but it was um, it was good. And I, I I did. I mean, I just I just had, I just had it, and that was it. You know, sandwiches, chicken legs, the the whole lot. You know, t- uh, um, tins of fruit and different things. It was lovely. It was lovely. I mean, that was all part of the fun of the swim. And I honestly used to enjoy it. I did really. There were once or twice when I used to think, well, what the heck am I doing out here? But that only lasts about two seconds. I thought, well, you know, in a couple of hours, hopefully I'll be landing at Calais or We Song or be landing somewhere. I'm going home. And then people used to sort of say to me, you know, well, Merv, what's, what's the worst part? Merv, you tell me the worst part of a channel swim. Is it, is it the training? No. Is it being out there? No. You know, crossing the main shipping lanes in the world, busiest shipping lanes in the world? No. I said, you know, I said the worst part about a channel swim for me, and they said, 
Now, what's that? I sort of said, well, I said, about a quarter of an hour after I finished the swim, they sort of said, oh, we understand you're probably aching and, you know, your, your tongue and mouth feels all pickled and, and different things. And I, you know, I sort of said, well, no, not really. So what is it? Then? I said, because I said, I know within a quarter of an hour of getting on that boat to come back to England, I'm over the side being seasick terrible sailor that's the worst part of the swim for me that is the worst part is coming back all the way back to england again um being being seasick you know but uh let me let, 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 let me let me take yeah, you out of the channel merv i i know you have a, okay six more swims but i i'm curious about your your first trip to canada for an international swim i'm assuming you hadn't been a world traveler before that no, no. I got, um, you know, we're talking about, you, you've done your introduction about how I broke Brojan Das's record. Um, I never had any, in, I never had any intention of breaking any record, hand on heart, not at all. But by the time I went to Canada in 1971, I did my fifth crossing in 1970. Now, because I used to meet the old channel swimmer, well, I say the old channel swimmer, quite a few channel swimmers on the beach at Dover, they used to sort of say, Merv, come to Canada, come on, come to Canada. And I got talked into it. And I went there and I applied, you know, to go in races and I got as things like um, uh, Lake St. John, uh, the Chicoutami um, swim to Baggettville, and, um, and, uh, yeah, uh, Lake St. John Le Tuck, the Le Tuck swim as well. And, um, and, I, and I, went, I went all in them. I went, I, I went in them. And again, I was the novice. Although I'd done five channel swims, I was the, I was the novice. But, but saying that, you know, I mean, I'd, I'd, heard, of, I'd heard of some of these, uh, you know, sort of swimmers, you know, in Canada. And although I was swimming against them, because I suppose, well, it was a race, I felt as I was swimming more with them. You know, for the likes of, in their day, there are people like Dennis Matouche and, and Johan Shawns and Abel Heath and of course, uh, John and Ted Erickson and along with Diana Nyad. And, um, and we're all swimming there. And I was just learning as I went along. I didn't go over there to earn millions of dollars. I went over there just for... Uh, just go over there, you know, just go over there and, and see what happens in other countries, you know, and, you know, and I got paid a few dollars for it, then moved on to the next swim and so on and, you know, so on and so forth. But I was, I always, I, that was in 1970, that's in 1971. I was, I was 22 and I had the time of my life. Training, training wasn't a problem. Because it got so hot over there, I was all too glad to get in the water to train. But but the races, they were phenomenal, I think, and and everything. And I thoroughly, I I just enjoyed it. I just I I just enjoyed I just enjoyed all all the swimming and all went on. And I came back when I came back in the September because I drove down through from um, I think it was Le Tuck. I, I drove down through to New York with Tom Hetzel and stayed with him for a couple of weeks. So I wanted to see New York. When I flew home, I told my dad, and the first thing my dad said, well, I'm going to try and get special leave next, next year. Do you, or, or rather, you're going to go next year? I said, yeah, too right. And so he managed to get special leave. And he came out with me in 72, did the same circuit. And me and him, we had a whale of a time. And... Um, and, and it, it was brilliant. I, I'm so, so glad I did it. But like I said just now, I didn't quite to beat road. I didn't quite to get any re record. I, I did what I wanted to do, was swim the English Channel. But when I came back... So, Merv, let, uh, yeah, so, so let, let, yeah. me, let me... No, let me, um, let me kind of ask you one last question. Um, yeah, you, sure. You then, at a certain point, kind, kind of stopped doing all the marathon swims. And then... Uh, you, you came back for a couple of special events. You ended up down in Florida for your induction into the International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame. And I assume yeah, you went yeah. to the CSA dinner for the anniversary of your 50th 
um, English Channel, but about last year or the year before. What, what do those mean to you, those, those kind of uh, late recognitions in your life, so to speak? Well, uh, well, first of all, let's start, we'll start with Florida because that came, uh, that came first, if you like, before my 50th anniversary. I went over there and I could not believe it. When I had the invite, I said to my, I said to my wife, Rose, I said, I can't, I can't believe all this because 1974 is when I, got, when I took the record. When I, when, when I actually broke the record and became the king. And um, I said, and now it's 2006, you know, 2006, and they're asking me to go back and go into the International Marathon Hall of Fame. I mean, I, was, I, 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 mean, I was just gobsmacked, you know, to be, to be amongst, in the, in the same building, to be amongst some of the um, greatest swimmers in the world, whether they're swimming pool swimmers, whether they're water polo players, or whatever, or whether they're marathon swimmers. For me, Merv Sharp, <laughs> for me to be in the same building with them in a hall, a swimming hall of fame, I find it, I find it such an honor. I honestly do. I mean, it's something I never ever expect in a million years, probably like chasing after my first channel swim. I just didn't expect it in a million years. And now, you know, and now I'm in the, you know, now I'm in the Hall of Fame. And uh, it's such a, well, it, it, it's such an honor, really. It, re- it honestly is. It, it, it's such an honor. I'm, I'm, sometimes if I, if I sit back and seriously think about it, I'm blown away. I am, honestly. And for them to especially remember that my last swim, when I got the record in 74, um, when I got it in 74, and then I get invited in about 2006, I think it was. I mean, that's a few years that's, uh, that's gone by. And for them to remember, boy, Homer Sharp, you know, and, and whatever. And, and there I was. And like I said, I was so blown away you know, buy it all. And I still am, really, to be honest. It is such an honor to be there with some of the, well, with some of the best swimmers, some of the best swimmers in the world, really. So to be amongst them all is absolutely brilliant, mate. Absolutely brilliant. And, um, and then, then as for my 50th channel swim anniversary, which was 2017, yeah, great. It was lovely. I had a, you know, it was, it was, it was lovely. Just went up there and, you know, and, and we all had the same, you know, you know, we've all, we, we all, we've all got like the same in common denominator. So you can, you know, talk to people and, and, uh, you know, and not what, you know, not everything you're talking about. I mean, I obviously went to, I've obviously been to the CSA dinner before, you know, going, you know, back in years before that and a year before that and this, that and the other. And I can remember bumping into somebody. I can't remember I can't remember what country he came from. Now I must have been but I do think it's America. And um and somebody sort of said, Oh, this is Merv Sharp. He used to be he used to be king of the channel back in nineteen seventy four. And he sort of said, Oh, he said, I know I've heard about you. He said you're the guy who sweet all those cheese sandwiches and chicken legs and everything, you know, and, and whatever. And I said, yeah, I'm the guy. And he said, let me shake it by the hand. He said, well done, well done. And so brilliant, absolutely brilliant. It's such, it's brilliant. And if I could have my, if I could have my time all over again, I mean, if you're my fairy, co- if you're my fairy godmother, then you said to me, Merv, I can take you back to just after Christmas in 1966, and I can take you back there. Would you want to train and do it all again? And I tell you what, in all honesty, I'd snap your hand up. Yeah, come on. Let's do it. 
all again. I would love to. I mean, it's, it's nice to it's nice to get the slap on the back, which I suppose you know a lot of swimmers would agree with, and other sports people. It's nice to get a slap on the back and a handshake and sort of say, "Hey, well done, Merv. You're brilliant. You know, nice to meet you, and proud to know you know, proud to know you." And this, and that. Don't get me wrong; that is absolutely lovely. But I did it, and it's a lovely, it's a lovely, lovely bonus. Don't get me wrong; it's a lovely, lovely bonus. But I did it just for my own personal achievement and enjoyment and I, I have to say I loved every minute of it apart from getting on the boat coming back to England and leaning over the side and that's about it really so and that and that is why I have never ever been on a channel swim as an observer uh, that, that's the only reason I, 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 I was asked in the early days I said I can't do it I can't do it honestly I can't do it and that's why I've never ever been an observer so you know, so there you go. Merv Sharp, so. Merv Sharp, King of the Channel, International Marathon Swimming Hall of Fame honoree. It's been absolutely a pleasure. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, Ned. Very kind of you. Thank you very much indeed.